Fortunately, there are no injuries or deaths reported from this latest round of flooding that we know of. Here's the situation right now. Take a look at the intersection of National and Chestnut. Most of the water has gone down. The crash happened just before 10 p.m. last night. It was a small single engine plane that you can still see there in the background crash into the fence here at Republic High School. A male person of interest is in custody. He was located at this rent to own autos lot you can see behind me. There are a few police officers and detectives on scene. They've also got the area roped off with tape and we got exclusive exclusive KY3 video of that arrest. We'll play it for you now. This is a good example of how all that flooding we had earlier damaged some city roads. Now water got up underneath the pavement, causing it to ripple and causing large chunks to pop out. It is freezing out here. My thermometer says it's about 19 degrees and the mercury is still dropping. So again, very cold. And for students that have to wait outside on sidewalks like this or even walk to school, even being outside for a few minutes and temperatures like these can be brutal. This time I'm actually joining you from inside of a storm shelter here at the HBA Home Show. We're inside of the Family Safe Storm Shelter and this is just one of the many things that you can see and do and it's really hands-on. That's actually the best part about this expo. It's a dromedary camel which means we're going to come out here. You can see it just has one hump. Also a fun fact I just found out is dromedary camels don't spit so that's good for me seeing as I'm going to be up close and personal with Tantor for the next few minutes. These fires are even more dangerous when the tree is dry. Check out this video from the National Fire Protection Association. It shows the difference in flammability between a dry tree there on your left and one that's been regularly watered on the right. The biggest problem we run into is the culture of gun ownership in America is changing. We've been in business for five years and we've uh, we've seen a steady growth in the women in the shooting industry. Kelly McGinnis says she didn't get into it to target a trend. She just wants to feel safer. I would like to be able to just defend myself and um, if I needed to and I hope I never do. Owners of Sons of Freedom shooting range in Ozark say women just like Kelly make up about 30 percent of their membership and about 40 percent of their concealed carry class participants. During the day goes by we don't have someone come in that's looking to get into the shooting sport. And their reasons can vary. A lot of times they'll come in for self-defense and find out they enjoy it. There's a lot of gratification in becoming proficient at something that you are a little bit timid about to start with. And merchandisers are getting on board with this trend as well. From concealed carry purses to gun holsters that can fit inside your bra, there's a wider availability of products targeted towards women, and they're selling quickly. More colors in the gun, like like uh, the rainbow in the in the SIG, and some of the others. And just this morning, I picked up one, and now Car's going to make one that's a dusty rose finish on the on the barrel. But Kelly says much more important than carrying your weapon in style is the sense of empowerment that comes along with learning a new skill. We're the protectors of our families as moms and grandmas and and um, we just there's just times that you might need to step up and protect your families. In Ozark, Shayla Patrick, KY3 News. Inches of snowfall in just a matter of hours left many drivers in Branson walking, pushing cars, or just plain stranded. I thought I could make it, but I just, I fishtailed and slid all the way up. And she wasn't alone. More than a dozen other cars tried to make it up Roark Valley Road in Branson and also got stuck. I think it took everybody by surprise. So a lot of people went out and about this morning, go to church, went about their normal way, uh, not thinking this is going to be that bad. And so then closer to noon when church let out, and votes were completely missed. But for many, help arrived before they even had a chance to call for a tow. We've moved several. Uh, I didn't expect to get such a workout today, but that's good. Uh, fortunately, we have a lot of people here. A lot of good Branson community showed up. Uh, helping each other out. This is this is really something to say about the community and uh, why it's such a good place to be. Go, 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 go. They've just worked their little fannies off to push these cars up go. this hill. And they've been out here for probably an hour. There's still a few cars left over from that pileup earlier today. But another thing's challenging drivers is not just the slick roads, but also Branson's very hilly terrain. A lot of people that live in flat country, this, they cannot understand how two inches or three inches of snow can be a problem. But with this hilly terrain, you just always end up at the bottom. The other thing is, as you go further south, we have considerably more snow. I mean, we have here probably two or three inches maybe. 
Um, but as you go to the, toward the state line, they're telling me between five and six. Emergency responders say as of late Sunday afternoon, there were no fatalities and very few injuries reported as a result of these roadside fender benders. Good afternoon. I'm Shayla Patrick in for Steve, and we're going to go straight to weather. The Salvation Army just announced its 2015 Tree of Lights campaign results so far for the season. A man from McDonald County died after an all-terrain vehicle accident. The crash happened early Tuesday, less than a mile from the Arkansas state line. Things are making a come back in the business world, but some of the increases could hurt your wallet. KY3 Sarah Foreheads has today's business brief. Still to come here on KY3 News, a Christmas emergency. What had this little girl calling 911? From flooded roads to a family that's been flooded out. Heavy rains forced one family from their home in the wee hours of the morning here in Webster County. Here's more on how that family is recovering after severe storms. My five-year-old started screaming, mom and dad, mom and dad. And my first thought was that he was sick. It was a wake-up call the whole family did not expect. He jumped out of the bed and I heard water splash and he cursed and... I looked over the side of the bed and it was about Knee high. two inches from my knees. I've lived here my entire life and the house has never flooded. With several inches of rain falling overnight, the swollen James River made itself welcome in their home. Trying to get out the front door and my kids' life jackets came floating through my living room, so I put them on them, didn't know what else to do. The family of four and their dog escaped, but then their thoughts turned to items left behind. They were able to save wedding and family photos, but most everything else was ruined, soaked in water. I don't know what we're we going to do. We don't know what we're going to do. We've lost everything. We absolutely have lost you our guys whole life. Us. But with the help of neighbors. Thank goodness for them. They immediately let us in. My kids are asleep in their living room on an air mattress. And some perspective. The kids Not are out. It. The kids are out. We're out. That's the important We stuff. got our lives. The holes know they will get through this. We got some stuff that mean things to us. We got so. things we can look at and still smile about in pictures. Other than that, everything's gone. Now, at one point, the water level was so high, Highway KK was even flooded. The good news is that water has since gone down. You can see some of the debris left behind from that event. But now, since the rain has let up, the water's gone down and the whole family is able to get back inside and access more of their belongings. They're just hoping for a break from the storms long enough to do so. In Webster County, Shayla Patrick, KY3 News. Good morning. It's 757. I'm Shayla Patrick. And I'm Paul Adler. 17 MoDOT workers have died on the job since 2000. With several major road projects planned for Nixa this summer, city leaders want to help make sure workers and drivers are both kept safe. Verdict is expected today in the trial of one of the six Baltimore police officers charged in the death of Freddie Gray. Officer Edward Nero is being tried by a bench trial. Time now coming up on 550. Up next, a three-hour weekend crime spree in Springfield.